What's up you guys, welcome back to this week's Manga Sutra Manga Review, and in this week's video we're going to be talking about a fantasy setting horror ecchi manga called Kyoshu Reto. Now the manga starts off with a plane full of high schoolers heading towards a certain destination for their trip when the plane begins to malfunction and crash into an abandoned island. Now we get our main character Oribe Mutsumi who after regaining consciousness begins to panic and scream the name Chitose over and over. However, shortly afterwards, she regains composure and comes up with a survival strategy of her own by collecting barnacles as food, when she encounters another classmate who is the softball club captain. Now, the softball club captain herself is physically capable, and she's smart, and she's friendly. Now, as her and Mitsumi begin to talk, Mitsumi begins to deduce that from their geographical location, help should arrive in no later than three days and that their strategy should be to ration food and find a better place for when help does arrive. Now, at this point, the softball club captain decides to go and search for other survivals from the plane crash. Now, mark this spot in the video. Mark this spot. I think the manga would have been better off with just Mutsumi and the softball club captain and Chitose being the only survivors of the plane crash and surviving it alone without any of the other class because at this point or after this point going forward throughout the entirety of the manga everyone else is just a dumbass and I'm gonna explain why we see with the class they're nothing more than walking archetypes and stereotypes we have the bad boy we have the thought, we have the lesser thought, we have the plain Jane, we have the otaku, we have the fodder character whose name we can't remember too much, we have the henchman of the bad boy, we have the goody two shoes class rep, and we have the weasel character who is the slimy, self preserving, opportunistic guy who's too cowardly to do something face to face, but will backstab you when he gets the chance and it suits him. Now we see these different dynamics go on with the rest of the class and outside of Mutsumi and the softball club captain with these classmates from this other group the only two capable people out of them seem to be the class rep and the fodder female character that dies quickly afterwards. Now they begin to go and look for resources when they encounter gigantic butterflies and the fodder female character named Inoue, I think, she dies the most oddest death to me. Because the butterfly just lands right on top of her. Lo and behold, her pants are to her ankles and the butterfly sticks its tongue into her vagina and sucks out her bodily fluids and desiccates her that way. And the otaku male character dies trying to save another character who's being attacked by a butterfly as well. Now, lo and behold, Mutsumi and the softball club captain come in like Bear Gryllis on steroids. They get aerosol spray and Mutsumi manages to use a lighter and set one of the butterflies on fire knowing that it will instinctually scare away the larger other butterflies. Now, does she get credit from the rest of the class for saving their asses? No, not really. Not, not at all, actually. And we see that it's a recurring thing throughout this manga where Mitsumi MacGyver's some badass strategy or weapon and comes up with this battle plan to fight these insects and creatures and save her classmates and she doesn't really get much thanks afterwards. And we see the mentality of these other characters as self-destructive. It's like they're intentionally shooting themselves in the foot. We see the bad boy and the thought later on lock out Mutsumi and the rest of the class outside to be attacked and killed by a large insect. You're locking out Mutsumi. Pretty much Bear Grylls. Pretty much the Chuck Norris of this manga. The one character that has knowledge and expertise on insects, geography, diseases, survival skills. Her intelligence is worth a thousand of them and they literally just lock her out there to die. Or, or better yet, you would think that the teachers would be more mature than the high school students. You would think that the teachers would have some wisdom or some survival skills that they could bring or put forth on the table. 
but the only two high school teachers we see one is dying and the other one is an idiot because the other teacher decides to take the bad boy's advice the same bad boy that locked out half of the class to die same bad boy who she finds tied up she demands Mitsumi and the rest of the class to untie him even though he got one of them killed by locking them outside and she takes his word that the hospital is safe that they can go back and they can retrieve even more food and resources from the hospital even though Mitsumi tells the teacher it's crowded with insects going back is a suicide mission she sends her students to go back anyway and when one of them dies and when three more are about to die Mitsumi comes up with an badass strategy saves their asses returns to the teacher only to be chastised for not bringing back food or better yet after that situation with the teacher Mutsumi convinces the teacher that they need to go to a new location for when help does arrive in the middle of the night Mutsumi is abducted by one of the male students and almost raped and she's luckily saved by her friend slash love interest Chitose and another male student and when they return she's slapped by a female student who insinuates she had went to go and have sex with the male student. Despite the fact that we just had two characters rescue her from being raped. And they step up and try to defend her, but the teacher just pretty much steps in and says, We don't have time for that. Or when she told or when Mutsumi falls behind because of being raped, the teacher just pretty much says, Well, if she falls behind, she falls behind. We're not going back. The one character with the survival skills needed to continue all the way to the end and it's like they're intentionally throwing out their golden goose. They're their golden egg laying goose. That's what they're doing. They're basically throwing it out the window. And and it, it just pisses me off because I just I don't understand what the Arthur's thinking. I don't understand what's in the Arthur's mind with creating these characters to be so stupid, to have these characters making such reckless decisions. And don't get me wrong, I know it's a horror manga, it's a survival horror manga. They, like, like Vero, there has to be stupid decisions made, you know, they have to make dumb decisions to get the plot going, get the plot moving. There's, there's reasonable decisions to move the plot forward, and then there's just shooting yourself in the foot just to spite your own foot. And th this is that. This is exactly that. And there's a lot of events that go on in the manga, so I'm not really going to go through a A to B outline of it. I'm just going to go straight into the review that I've kind of already begun. The plot is interesting in its premise of these gigantic insects and creatures being on this island, and we don't know exactly why they're so large or how they got there. And... Another thing the manga has going for it in this aspect is we get these interesting facts and information on these insects and how they reproduce, their behavior and their patterns, and different parts of diseases that Mutsumi manages to know about and survival skills that she uses and demonstrates throughout the manga. What takes away from this premise being so interesting, what takes away from the plot truly in my opinion is the stupidity of the characters and the lack of character development and what I mean by this is like I said earlier the characters have this self-destructive tendency to them it's like they don't want to survive it's like they are not trying to think reasonably it's like they're basically jumping off a cliff just to jump off a cliff just because they can and what I mean by lack of character development is I want the Arthur to give me a reason why I should give a shit about the thought dying. Why I should give a shit about the lesser thought dying. Why plain Jane matters when she dies. Why should I care if the otaku gets killed trying to rescue another character. Or why should I care that the bad boy is inserting himself as the automatic leader of the group and acting like he's making smart decisions when he's not acting like he's important when he's not when he's not the one that the class is going to for survival choices why should I care 
about any of these characters surviving. And we only get two reasonable or two okay backstory slash flashbacks. We get one with Chitose and the thought. Uh, we get Chitose walking around the school and finding a teacher having sex with a female student to boost their grades. And that female student was the thought. And another flashback or backstory we get is the bad boy trying to rescue his friend Akira, who is abducted by a gigantic bee. Now, or a gigantic wasp, my bad. And we get a flashback of them fighting side by side, and we get some brotherly bromance moment between them, and that's about it. Outside of that, Akira gets killed off relatively quickly in the next few chapters, and I don't feel a thing about it. I just don't feel a thing about any of these characters outside of Mitsumi and the softball club captain and Chitose. And that's a maybe on that. Because, honestly, there is no real emotional connection to Mutsumi outside of seeing her just really kill it as far as coming up with these badass strategies and just saving everyone's ass. Um, the softball club captain, I can connect with her a lot more because the softball club captain, she's just kind of like the reader. You... She doesn't really have anything that really stands out that really stands out too well outside of her physical abilities from being in the softball club. She's not as smart as Mutsumi. She's trying to keep everyone together. She's trying to look out for everyone. And Mutsumi notices this. And Mutsumi is trying to encourage this with the softball club captain to don't feel bad, don't feel inferior or anything like that. That she's doing a good job. And I feel for the softball club captain in that regard. Another thing I don't like with the plot as well is I know that um, this manga is tagged etchy as well. But I feel like if you're going to be including sexual situations and all this other stuff, it has to make sense. All of it has to make sense. Whether it's one character stabbing another character or whether it's two characters having sex in the middle of an apocalypse, it has to make sense in some type of way. There has to be some type of build up to it. And it it doesn't. It doesn't. Like at the beginning of the manga, the thought just pretty much fondles the um, class representative she tells his breast just because she can, just because um, I don't know I I I don't I don't think she's doing it just because she can, but she's doing it in a way to harass them and manipulate them or mess with them psychologically or something like that. Cause she does this to a lot of female characters that I see in the manga, and she likes to use her own sex appeal with the male characters to try to get them to do what she wants. But we see the male characters aren't really so much interested in it because, like they said at the beginning, who hasn't seen your underwear? So for them, they're not really too phased by, you know, some of the sex appeal unless it's kind of like the exact offer of sex. Or after Mutsumi manages to guide the class out of the forest of ticks and she tells them to wash off in the ocean, we see... Some of the female characters using sex appeal to get themselves into certain alliances. We see um, the thought and the bad boy hooking up because they believe that they're pretty much a power couple. She tries to tell the bad boy, you know, you're the real leader. You know, they need you. And he's buying into this despite the fact that he hasn't came up with one solid plan yet. And everyone is listening to Mutsumi and the softball club captain and not him. Or how the softball club captain manages to get seduced by the lesser thought into protecting her from the bigger thought because reasons? I don't know. I don't know. Reasons. She tells the softball club captain, you should be the real leader of the group, not Mitsumi, not the bad boy, not the thought, you. And don't get me wrong, I like the softball club captain. I think the captain should be the leader of the group, in a sense. But, you know, Mitsumi kind of has it on lock. You know, with if she can create skills to save, if she can create plans to save everyone, and so on and so forth, that should be the clear de facto leader. 
not some over macho guy and not the softball club captain for all intents and purposes. She's more of like the emotional support of the group, the um, backup captain or the backup leader, if need be. And the class representative or class president, Chitose, I just don't know how I feel about her exactly. Um, with her, it's, it's like she doesn't really have too much of a role to play outside of being a love interest. She's not hindering the plot, but she's not contributing anything to it, in my opinion. Now, going back to the um, criticism of um, sexual content in the manga, some of the situations where sexual stuff does happen just doesn't make any sense. Like, like I said, you just get out of this forest full of ticks that could have killed you, and you're having sex and fucking on the beach and forming these sexual alliances for power? Like, you basically only have to survive for two more days, according to, according to, um, according to the main character's estimations, you only have two more days to survive. Or, better yet, when the main character and the rest of the class were locked outside by the bad boy and the thought, they had the class representative, Chitose, tied up to a table, and the thought was pervertedly giving her a cavity search of her vagina for parasites like your class is getting killed outside by large insects and you're trying to get some perverted kick out of this or, or whatever like what or, or or how the um male student tried to rape um mutsumi in the middle of the woods at night while the rest of the class was trying to get to a safer location you or in, you are on an island surrounded by large insects that will kill you in day or night and you are deciding now is a good time to rape one of the class I, I just don't understand I, I just I don't get it I don't get it and I understand it's an etchy tag but it doesn't make sense and it doesn't really um, make the plot flow any smoothly it, it just makes it look messy it makes it look um, disjointed and if anything, it's not a turn on, it's a turn off because it just doesn't flow right. If it made sense, if it made sense and there was a build up to some of this um, sexual tension between characters or, you know, give it some chapters to build up, give it some subtle hints here, some subtle flirts there and so on and so forth, maybe. But it's just like this manga is just throwing the sexual content at you. Like when Chitose gets abducted by a gigantic wasp and Mutsumi or whatever her name is anymore I can't even say it anymore when she was talking about the wasp tendency to lay eggs on their prey and that the prey that the um, eggs will hatch and they will eat um, the prey that they are laid on and how they'll keep them alive it pretty much depicted Chitose not in this half eaten gory state but just pretty much naked Pretty much naked with larva as a bikini. And I felt like um I felt like the manga wasn't taking the horror aspect seriously enough. And don't get me wrong, I like sexual content here or there. There are some mangas I read exactly only solely for the sexual content, but this is a survival horror manga. You're not gonna take this a little bit more seriously? I mean it's just kinda ruined it for me. The artwork is Subpar, you know, what I mean by subpar is the artwork for the characters, the human characters, was pretty much generic, like any other survival horror manga. Where the artwork really began to shine, where the artwork really stood out, was the artwork for the insects, was the artwork for the crabs, or for the other creatures on the island. That was where the artwork really, stru really stood out, but um, it wasn't really all that it was really lackluster if you ask me would I recommend reading this manga I mean if you're an insect fanatic and you like you know the interesting facts about insects and you know the interesting tidbits of information application of certain skills and stuff like that go for it if you want to see Mutsumi kicking ass and coming up with badass um, strategies and saving everyone's ass throughout the entirety of the manga go for it because pretty much at this point, the only reason I'm reading it is to see Mutsumi 
continue to win and pretty much see the rest of them all die. Because, like I said, there's not that much character development going on. I don't feel too attached to any other characters. And there's only three characters I really want to see win this or come out of this alive. So it's whatever at this point. But I wouldn't really go home and tell your family about it. I wouldn't really rant and rave about this manga to my friends. That's my opinion. But I did a 23 minute long recording of this video before and then I read chapter 14 where there was a rape scene or there was a um, almost rape that happened with the main character and I just felt like I had to just do the entire video over again. I just had to do the entire review over again to cover it in this video. Now this is VM, like, comment, share, subscribe. Have you ever read a manga where everything else was fine, but the characters, some of the characters in the manga ruined it for you? Were there ever characters that were just so shitty in their development, in their personality, in their traits, in their actions and decisions, that it just literally just made you want to drop the manga or it really just ruined your enjoyment of the manga? If so, tell me about it. Tell me about the character. Tell me about the manga. Tell me why. 